All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today's topic is going to talk about assigning contracts, okay? Uh, there's a misconception when it comes to the to the uh, agreement that the purchase agreement stipulates under paragraph 23 of the um, real estate uh, purchase agreement. Now, there's, a, there's pros and cons when it comes to the assigning, and I think there's a little bit of confusion around when and how you navigate an assignment, okay? And there's a couple of variants to the assignment that I want you to also understand when it comes to the proper way in navigating when it is um, navigated from a buyer's agent perspective and also from a listing agent perspective, okay? So let's go ahead and dive deep into it. Also, a lot of the information can be pulled from the California Association of Realtors as well, okay? A lot of the information that I gather is right from uh, CAR, all right? But the purchase agreement has a section uh, that allows us to assign the contract, okay? So let's dive deep into the conversation. And if you have any questions, you know, uh, please put it on the chat or uh, let me know as well. Okay, so what's an assignment contract, okay? Sometimes during, during the course of the transaction, a buyer may need to assign all or a portion of their interest in the contract, okay? And this is what I mean from a buyer, right? A buyer now has to transition into something different, right? So this could mean that swapping out one buyer for another, a total assignment, adding an additional buyer to the existing one as a partial assignment or deleting a buyer or replacing a buyer with at least one original buyer remaining other assignment okay assignment, assignment? yes Are yes you showing the forms yeah you're, you're not seeing the form no no we don't see the forms okay one second i apologize i thought it's showing here so uh one second let me see okay maybe that's the reason um okay so share <clears throat> okay, let's see here. One second. I'm not sure why it's not showing the form. <clears throat> Do you see it now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you do see it now. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So <clears throat> let's start. Let's start this again. Okay. So what I was uh, referencing was the assignment of contract, right? During the uh, mm -hmm. initial process, right? These can mean a couple of things, right? It's a swapping one buyer for uh, another, adding an additional buyer to the existing one, or deleting a buyer or replacing a buyer with at least one original buyer still in remain. Okay, in each of these uh, cases, the buyer under the residential purchase agreement, better known as the RPA, have a limited right to assign their interest, right, in the contract as long as they follow the appropriate procedure, okay? So <clears throat> under the uh, purchase agreement, paragraph 23, uh, it lays out the procedure for assignment to take place. If the buyer assigns all of their interest to either their own trust or a wholly owned entity buyer that is in existence at the time that the buyer has the right to make the assignment and does need to uh, the seller's consent. Meaning, okay, as a buyer, okay, as a buyer, I have the right to assign it to any of my entities, okay? And what's an entity? An entity can be your LLC, your S Corp or C Corp if you have one, right? Or a trust. So I'm in escrow, our offer got accepted. 
and I submitted under Simon or John Doe as an example, right? I submitted an offer. My agent who's representing me as the buyer submits an offer under Simon Casades, right? Or John Doe. During the escrow period, I decide, right? I decide that I want to transition and not have it under my name, but I want to have it under my corporation, okay? And you're going to see a lot of buyers who are investors go in that direction, or they may submit a request from one entity, one corporation to another corporation, and that happens. Most investors have multiple corporations, right? We go with ABC Corp, and now they want to go with DEF Corp, right? And that's perfectly fine as long as you're within the contingency period to do so. Okay. And I'll explain a little bit more on how that works. Any of the circumstances, buyer may not assign the contract without first getting the separate written consent of the seller and a specific assignee. Meaning, the thing is here, the difference between the assignment is you can assign it to yourself or a corporation within the time uh, allowed. But what you cannot do, folks, okay, and this is where a lot of the confusion is, you cannot assign it to a whole different person or an entity that is not yours, okay? The only way you can do that is only if you get the consent in writing and the seller allows it because the seller does not have to allow it, right? They went with the motions of accepting your offer, right? Under the stipulation of the terms and conditions of that contract. Meaning that what you put as the buyer is the buyer that the seller believes is gonna close the transaction, okay? If you can please uh, mute yourself too on Zoom. Let me see here one second. First time I've ever said garbage can, but you know what? It's a very accurate That's the real problem. I apologize. One second. Now I want to bring in Harris Campaign co-chair. If you can please uh, mute yourself on Zoom. Okay. Let me, uh, let me see. Okay, so in essence, under under the uh, paragraph 23, it says the right to assign, right? <clears throat> and then we'll get into it a little bit more. But the seller's consents uh, can only be uh, accepted if the seller allows the assignment. Okay, so the right to assign under paragraph 23 of the RPA. When making an assignment request, the buyer must disclose the name of the assignee, disclose the amount of any monetary consideration between the buyer and the assignee, and provide assignee with all documents related to the transaction. Ensure that the assignee will provide a letter for assigning and the lender that assignee is pre-qualified or pre-approved as specified on the RPA. Meaning that in order for this all to work is one, the lender has to be aware, right? Sometimes that may happen. You go with the motion of getting your offer accepted, right? And it can be, you know, two parties, right? Two buyers that are trying to get qualified for a loan. And through the, uh, through the trenches, they find out that unfortunately they don't have enough means to qualify, okay? And now you may have to add a third party to the qualification because we need that extra income in order to get them where they need to be to qualify for this loan. So then that's when we add a third party to the agreement. Well, that has to be agreed upon, okay? Because we're adding a body. And that also goes when we're re uh, removing someone, okay? We go with the motions of a, of a husband and wife as an example, right? But then we find out that after running their credit, one of the uh, one of the parties' credit was very low, and it's going to impact and hurt from then qualifying. So then we may have to remove someone from the contract, right? Because originally, buyer and seller, okay, have an acceptance, right? Seller accepted the terms of that condition, and that could be two people, that could be one person, that could be three people, that could be as many people, right? Sometimes during escrow, they may need to do some modifications. 
And those modifications can be added or taken away from the contract. Okay. So right to assign under this uh, paragraph, I, if the buyer does not deliver the assignment request and satisfies the amount of requirements within 17 days after acceptance, okay, after acceptance, or whether there is a specific in the RPA under um, paragraph 3K, then the seller withholding of consent to the assignment shall be deemed reasonable, okay, reasonable. So in essence, this is a condition, folks, okay, when working with an investor or working with a buyer who also may have a trust or a corporation that they want to transition into, okay, or vice versa. Maybe they go in the motions of going through a, a LLC or a corporation, but now they want to go back into their personal individual that's also considered an assignment. Okay, so it could go either or. But what the contract stipulates and says is, hey, buyer, you have 17 days from time of acceptance to do any of these changes. Okay, and remember, it's your entity, right, that you can do these changes. If you're now pulling yourself and getting someone else involved, a different person, that has to be agreed. And I want to stress and emphasize that has to be agreed upon by the seller. And if the seller says no to that, which they have the right to do so, then you cannot do it. Now you have to either close the deal with that entity or person or cancel the contract. It's as simple as that. There's no ifs and buts in it, okay? The seller has to consider that, okay? so. Let me just put this into perspective so that, that way it's crystal clear to everyone, okay? I am buying a property, right? And I'm buying it under my corporation, okay? Because I want my corporation to be the owner of the property, right? Now I decide, you know what, after running some numbers, I don't think this is a good investment for me, right? I want to now transition it to someone else. So I reach out to other investors. Hey, I got a property that I'm currently in escrow that I want to uh, consider in backing out. Okay. But because I'm in escrow, I want to see if you are interested, if the numbers make sense to you, if you want to be able to come in and close the deal. Okay. So let's say that Kevin, as an example, right? Kevin says, okay, send me the address. Let me take a look at this uh, portfolio. Let me go physically look at the property and then I'll run some numbers to see if it makes sense, right? So you do this within a couple of days. Kevin comes back to me and says, you know what, Simon? This is a good investment. I don't mind uh, stepping in, okay? And let's say that Kevin also is a corporation, right? He has an LLC, all right? So now I'm going to now have a conversation with Alicia, who's the listing agent on this property, okay? And <clears throat> I'm going to create a, a form, which will explain a little bit, that when I speak with Alicia, I'm going to say, hey, Alicia, this is Simon. Listen, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, ask this and see if we can get the seller's permission, okay? Because it has to be the permission of the of the seller, right? Because the seller has two options, yes or no. Remember, I'm pulling now, but I still want to keep this active contract alive because I believe that a, an investor may see the value on it in closing out the deal. You all with me so far? So Kevin has already given me the, the uh, thumbs up and says, I'll go ahead and do so, right? Well, he's a separate entity than mine's, right? And if we go back to the acceptance of the agreement, the agreement was between the seller and I, right? Under the terms and conditions that I submitted. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to change any of the terms and conditions because those are already set in stone. So when I'm speaking to uh, Kevin, who is going to be the new assign assignee, he understands that those are the terms because I've given them that information. He knows what the price is. He knows about the uh, condition and also the terms. 
So he has to be okay with it. If he's not okay with it, then we're not even going to continue with this conversation because he has to agree to what the terms that I negotiated between the seller and myself. Okay. Hold that one thought, Jack. Okay. So now I'm reaching out to Alicia and I'm asking Alicia, hey, there's been a change in how we're going to do this. We're not going to cancel escrow, but I'm going to assign it to another investor. And that investor is Kevin with ABC Corporation or ABC LLC. Okay. So she is going to ask for a form that is part of the uh, part of the process in order for us to get an approval because it has to be approved by the seller. So then I'll prepare the form and I'm going to send it over, execute it to Alicia, who now Alicia will present it to her client of what transpired. The seller is going to look at it and make a determination and a decision if the seller is going to be okay with the transition and transfer from me to Kevin, or the seller's gonna say no to it. And those are perfectly fine. That's one scenario, okay? The other scenario is the right to assign it to my own entity. I go in as John Doe, right? And I submit my offer under John Doe and John Doe's offer gets accepted by Alicia, okay? Alicia now talks to Nikki, who is the seller of this property, and uh, you know stipulates that they're going to transition entities, right? Because now I'm going to transfer it from my sell, John Doe, now to one of my LLCs. Now, under the rules and regulations, yes. Lena, okay. Let's see here. One second, guys. The issue with Zoom here is um, I've been having some issues with the uh, with the form itself, <clears throat> Nikki. Can you do me a big favor? Yeah, sure. Can you go talk to Stephanie and tell Stephanie to have Rojo jump on Zoom and invite people in? Rojo? Rojo, yes, thank you. Yeah, tell him to jump onto the account and uh, put Zoom on, please. Okay, everyone on Zoom, can you still see the presentation? Yes. Yes, I can see. Yes. Okay, wonderful, thank you. You're still on uh, the right to assign a uh, slide, right? Yes, it should say uh, slide number five, right to assign under the paragraph. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. So now let's uh, let's have that conversation where now I want to personally put it into my own uh, LLC, right? So under that rules and regulation, unfortunately, Alicia, who is the listing agent, doesn't really have much authority over that. OK, as long as I do it within the 17 day, right? The 17 day. OK, for some reason, and I, I'm having some issues with Zoom. So I don't know if you can jump on Zoom, my my actual account and let people in. Because if I, if you look here, Rojo, I, I don't know why it's not uh, allowing me to uh, uh, do the Zoom. So it's running. It's just not letting you admit people, right? Correct. Okay. So if you can jump on my account and then, yeah, please. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know. It's uh, I'm, I've been having some issues with the my Zoom account. So, all right. So now um, I'm transitioning, right? And now I have uh, Alicia. I'm still going to let Alicia know that I'm going to transition from John Doe now to one of my corporations. But as long as I do with that 17 day period, folks, OK, it's perfectly fine to do it as long as it's one of my entities, a trust, LLC, S Corp, C Corp. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing that the seller has to do with it because it's still mine. OK, 
okay? Those are the two distinguishes regarding assigning, okay? Now, the bigger picture on paragraph 23 talks about three components to an assignee, okay? One we already discussed, right? Me putting it under my trust or my corporation or, or an S-corp. Two is I'm assigning oh, my- Oh, I went back there and he, I told him to let you in. Huh? Sorry about that, folks. Okay. So, okay. Um, okay, no problem. If you can please mute yourself on Zoom, please. Thank you so much. We can hear you. Please mute yourself. Okay, and then number um, uh, number two is the the uh, third uh, component to it is that if I want to assign it to a different entity, right? So I'm taking myself. And now let's say that Jack is, right, the new buyer, or in this case that we were referencing Kevin, right? And then the last component to an assignee is if we're adding or deleting someone from the contract, right? I go in as a uh, business partner with Nikki and I, we submit, but because something happens, either I pull out or she pulls out out of the contract, or we're adding someone else. And maybe we're adding a third partner and that partner is, is uh, Jack as an example because we need more uh, financials or more income to make this work, right? To make this, this investment, right? So those are the components that you can look at it from what we call the assigning part of it, right? So assigning one, my own personal corporation or trust, um, <clears throat> someone else, Different, different entity, and then adding or taking away from a from a client. Okay. All right. So the use of the assignment on the agreement and amendment, right? To make the assignment request and to complete the assignment itself, the buyer should use the assignment of agreement. And this is the form that you use. It's the AOAA form. The AA um, form has spaces for the buyer to indicate the name of the assignee, whether the assignment is a total or a partial or other, and whether or not the buyer is receiving consideration from this assignment. Paragraph two of the AOAA defaults to state that a copy of the qualifications approval and initial copies of all prior documents are attached to the form, and the buyer may elect to deliver prior documents to the assignee three days after Seller signs and delivers back to the OAA for uh, form in paragraph 2A. So here's an example and an illustration, okay, of the assignment of agreement, okay, form A, OAA, okay, and it talks about different things. Now, paragraph one, it says partial or total assignment. You got A, you got B, you got C, okay. A says partial assignment, adding a buyer is added to the assignee name below to, to this agreement and grant to such assignee as partial interest. And remember, all we're doing is full transparency, right? And providing additional uh, disclosure to the seller of what our intentions are regarding the form and what we're trying to accomplish here when closing out this deal. Because remember, we're assigning it, but we're not canceling. Just because I'm pulling out of this transaction or adding someone or removing someone or putting it into a corporation, okay, I'm not canceling, okay? We're still keeping the contract alive. I'm just using some other avenues and how we navigate this. Does that make sense? Okay. The use of the assignment. The assigning is required to initial the first page of all prior documents which can be done with the AOAA form within the specific time. And what is that time frame? 17 days. Exactly, 17 days to do so. So if our offer gets accepted today, right? Today would be considered zero days of 17 days to do an assignment, meaning it's calendar days. So tomorrow, Saturday is one, of 17 days to do these changes, okay? And what are those changes, right? Adding a person, deleting a person, right? 
giving my interest to another entity or my own personal trust or corporation. Okay. Effect of the assignment. If all of the above requirements are satisfied and the AOAA form is fully executed, then the assignment will be effective. Keep in mind that once the assignment has taken place, the assignee has approved and rectified all prior acts of the buyer in the transaction. And if they were uh, assigning own and agreed to perform all a buyer's obligation remaining in this agreement. What that means is basically is if I'm going to bring Kevin as an example, he has to understand that, hey, you're going to accept the terms of this agreement and ultimately you have to agree to and approve it. And if you don't, then there's no reason for me to even bring you into this deal. Okay, because remember, the seller's number one priority is to close the deal. And the reason they accepted your offer was because of the price terms and condition. That's it. So that has been set in stone, right? Now, is everything in real estate subject to change? 100%. 100%. Anything and all can definitely be changed during the process, right? But again, it has to be agreed between both parties, the buyer and the seller. They're the ones that are ultimately going to close the deal. But in order for this to work, it's, it has to all be an agreed upon. Now, let's just say 17 days have passed. And now it's the 18th or the 19th day and you have not released the assignment, right? There was not a contingency releasing that per, uh, particular condition. Can the buyer still do a change? Thoughts, yeah. questions, okay. How many people say yes to that question? How many people say no to that question because it's over 17 days? How many people don't even know what the right or wrong answer to that? You can do it, but you need to ask. Well, remember, folks, okay, it's a contingency, right? It's a condition of the contract, right? If the seller did not, if the seller did not ultimately send you the contingency removal of a certain condition, right, which can be um, physical inspection, seller disclosures, right, appraisal loans, HOA, Part of the assignment is also part of your physical contingencies as well. So if you have not released that and you're now past the 17 days, okay, you can still submit a request. Shame on the listing agent, okay, for not doing this in a timely manner. Because any listing agent or TC that's involved in this they should be on it immediately because it's time of the essence, right? No difference than all of the other contingencies, right? Because if you understand the contracts, guys, the contract is very clear and concise. And it says that the buyer shall release after a certain time frame. Most of your contingencies are within 17 days. Yeah. So if I'm the listing agent, I'm going to be on top of it with my listing coordinator or my TC. And I'm going to let my TC know, hey, make sure that we send out that contingency removal because most, most of the time the buyer and the buyer agent won't. They're going to try to prolong it as much as they can because remember, the longer they can hold on to that contingency or contingencies, the buyer decides to back out of the deal, cancel. There's really no recourse in breach of contract and more so monetary damage that now forfeits the buyer's deposit to the seller. You all with me, right? Because the buyer and the buyer agent held on to those conditions. Okay. Shame on the listing agent for not pushing to release those. Right. And it starts with the contingency removal. 
And also there's another form that you would utilize, which is the notice to perform. Okay, the notice to perform is basically pushing the buyer, hey, if you don't perform, okay, we have the right to exercise our right to cancel. So the contingency removal with the notice to perform are crucial, okay, when it comes to releasing conditions and more so. You're the listing agent and you get an offer from an investor, right? You'll know if it's an investor because they usually will submit it under their corporation, okay? Be mindful, be careful because I've seen deals fall apart when it comes to investors buying property because they have one foot in, one foot out. There's another element that I'm gonna also tell you about assignments, okay, that I wanna caution you. And the assignment is when ultimately they call it wholesaling, wholesaling, okay? Wholesaling is that I lock it in at this price, but now I'm gonna find an end user who will pay me something a little higher. That end user will now buy it for maybe 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 more than what I have it locked in. Okay. So what's happening is this original investor is getting a spread without doing anything. An agent has to be very careful because all of this information is part of that AOA form that says that if that is happening, which is not illegal to do so is to wholesale, right? I'm gonna use this as an example. I'm looking at the MLS, right? And I see a listing uh, that's a, a property that's in really bad shape, okay? Or it's never, it's never hit on the MLS, but I was door knocking and I had, happened to see an ugly house, right? And I either speak with the uh, seller or I speak with the listing agent who has it on the MLS, right? So after I do negotiations, and let's say that, the, that Kevin is the listing agent on this particular transaction, and he has it listed for 700000 okay? I do my homework. I do my analysis. And based on that, I took a look at the property. I had my contractor also give me an estimate on how much it's going to cost me to renovate this property. So that way I can now resell it for a premium, right? Okay. <clears throat> so I run the numbers and I submit an offer to Kevin at uh, 650. Okay. He put it at seven, but I, I submit an offer at 650 and the seller just wants to be out of that, that house. He just wants to get rid of it. He doesn't want it anymore. It's too much work. It has a lot of issues. And they just want a clean offer that we can close fast, right? So then I propose and I, and I submit an offer to Kevin for $650. Kevin now presents that, uh, that offer to the, to the seller. And the seller says, look, it's a clean offer. It looks like they can close in 15 days. They're using hard money or cash on this. They're releasing most, if not all, of the contingencies, right? Okay. They haven't released the assignment, but they're releasing the loan and maybe the appraisal. Okay. Seller comes back to Kevin and Kevin uh, tells me, Hey, Simon, I got good news. Says the seller will not sell it to you for $650, but the seller will, will sell it to you for $675. Okay. $675. I'm okay with that. He had it listed for $700. I get an offer, uh, an offer counter for six seventy five. That's a twenty five thousand dollar reduction of the original listing price, right? But I know that I can sell this property for maybe nine twenty five. Okay, and after having my contractor in there, right? He says, "Yeah, I can probably do it for a hundred thousand. Okay, six seventy five, a hundred thousand. That puts me where." 775, right? So that still gives me a pretty decent 
uh, spread, right? Once the house is completely renovated, or now I put it on the market for a lot higher, right? If I know that the area is going for 925, that's what, about $120,000, $150,000 potential profit, right? Obviously, there's holding costs, there's, you know, um, uh, contractor fees, um, all that fun stuff, right? But there's still a pretty decent profit on this, right? And I'm just using simple math, guys. I'm not crunching numbers, but I'm just using this as an illustration, okay? Using this as an illustration, right? So I'm okay at 675. I, uh, I, I sign, I sign the, uh, the acceptance, right? And we open escrow. <clears throat> I realize that there's another property that comes in and I want to submit an offer on that too, right? But now I'm str uh, uh, stretching myself very, very thin because now another offer came in. So now I'm thinking, gosh, you know what? I have this one, this one, and I have a couple projects that I'm working on. I'm pretty much uh, stretching myself very thin on this, right? So what I decide is I'm going to see if I can uh, wholesale the deal I have with, with Kevin. Okay. I don't want to make much of a spread, but I want to make something, right? So now I promote it to all of my people on my database. And let's say that Jack, who is a seasoned experienced investor, and I tell Jack, hey, Jack, I have a property that I have locked in in escrow. It's a beautiful place that has a lot of potential. I give him the address. He does a drive-by. There's a combo. He looks at it. He does his numbers. He gets his contractor. And his contractor tells him a lot less than my contractor, right? That they can make it work. Because every contractor has their own price, right? In consideration, right? Labor and material, right? So Jack comes back to me and says, I'm okay with that. Okay. What are you asking for? Well, uh, Jack, um, I am asking seven twenty-five. Seven twenty-five. Okay. So I have it in contract at what what price? Six seventy-five, right? I have it for six seventy-five with Kevin, but now I'm going to offer it to Jack for seven twenty-five. What's the spread on that? How much? 50,000. 50,000, correct. Someone was telling me 100,000. Okay, which is it? 100 or? So it's a 50, 50? Yeah. Yeah. So the difference is what I have it locked in at 675, right? And now I have an end user, Jack, who is willing to offer me 725, and I have to do nothing. Basically, I'm not closing. I'm not putting any risk involved. I'm not doing the renovations. I'm not taking the load of that responsibility, right? Who is taking the responsibility? Okay. No, not the seller. Jack will eventually take the responsibility, but under the condition that he can successfully close the deal. Yeah. I think you're jumping the gun, Nikki. Okay. So yes and no. All right. I have it in contract. I have a contract between me and and uh, and the seller already. Not because remember, if I'm in contract, this is an acceptance agreement that I have with uh, Kevin's client already. Because Kevin already presented to the seller, the seller accepted the six seventy five. Therefore, we're in escrow. Okay. All I'm doing is now a, a doing a, a wholesale. Right. Here's the big picture, right? Because I, I still want to be on the same page and not get too sidetracked uh, on the assignment, okay? But I also I wanted you to be mindful that this stuff happens behind the scene. And if you're the listing agent, you got to be on it because that can happen. And I've seen deals fall apart. And I've seen deals where the, the listing agent loses the listing because of situations like this. I just want you to be mindful of what can happen. Okay, because you don't know what's happening behind the scene with me. I have it in contract, therefore Kevin believes that I'm going to close the deal with with uh, his client. 
but I'm working another deal kind of structure because I want to get out, but I still want to make some money out of this deal. So now I wholesale it to Jack and Jack now says, okay, it's to 725. All right. So now I have a deal with Jack that ultimately <clears throat> we may have what's called a double escrow. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I'll explain. A double escrow. Okay. Some escrow companies will, some escrow companies will not do stuff like this. Okay. It's not illegal. Okay. Because some will do. But here's the problem is the transparency with this, right? And this is where it can jeopardize you as a real estate agent. Because you're in the chaos of all this. And ultimately, the listing agent is not really taking care of his client's best interest, right? Because the seller believes that we're going to go into escrow at 675. Okay. But in essence, not really. We're going to go at a lot higher. That $50,000 that I'm going to get as a spread should be going to who? The to the seller. Yeah. But now I'm trying to work a deal without me closing the deal to be able to get something for locking in this opportunity because Jack is going to get the biggest profit from it, right? Because even at 725, Hundred thousand, and let's say that his contractor says I can do it for eighty thousand. If you do the math at seven twenty-five and eighty thousand, what's the total now? Eight hundred and five thousand dollars, right? The area is going for nine twenty-five to nine fifty. Is that a still pretty decent profit? Yeah. yeah. As long as the contractor can do it quick, right? 90 to four to six months, because there's holding costs, there's taxes, there's interest, right? Especially if you have a, a harmony loan on it, right? In that case, okay. in that case, the sole will say they have to So she made a profit, a seller made a profit. So that has to be uh the, the taxes because there's a uh, profit yes so yes has to be done inside the escrow a hundred percent a hundred percent so i'll explain how that works because you're right okay and i'm going to try to nip this immediately because i got 15 more minutes before uh uh, uh a class uh finish all right so now we we're in we're in this deal right we're in this contract right one is if you look at the AOAO form, it says that if you're going to do this type of transaction, which is, again, it's perfectly fine to do so, but as long as it's fully disclosed to the seller, okay, the seller wants out. He already told Kevin that he wants out, okay? But what he doesn't know is that, you know, I now have another deal with someone else that's going to pay me an additional, okay? Well, the contract is very clear and concise of what it says. And it says that if you're going to do something like that, it must, must be divulged to the, to the seller as soon as practical. Okay. So if I'm going to do that, all right, I need to be full transparency with Kevin and tell Kevin what's going on. And the problem that I see and where I see a lot of issues is they don't and wait till the very end. Okay. And that's where you can jeopardize your position more so as a listing agent for not full transparency. Is it happened quite often? It does. Okay. But you got to just be so clear and concise in how you're delivering that to the seller. And I want to be full transparency, especially as a licensee submitting an offer, right? Because real estate agents submit offers too. You know, one, you have to disclose that you're a licensed agent as well, full transparency, right? So there's benefits to this type of a deal, right? Because I benefited from him closing and then I get a percentage of the, uh, the profit from that, okay? Because there's still enough spread for Jack to get profit from that deal, right? I just got to find the escrow company that is willing to do so, and there's far and few that will, okay? 
The other avenue is full transparency. I tell I tell Kevin, hey Kevin, I'm just gonna let you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I I gonna wholesale it to someone else. So in essence, we're gonna close as agreed upon, but we're gonna close at a higher price. And that higher price is $725. But that fifty thousand dollars is not going to go to the seller. It's going to go to me. Okay, because I have a contract between you and the seller for this, but I have someone else that's going to step in and close it for a higher price. Okay, and that as long as that's good. Now Kevin has a tough position, and that tough position is he now has to relay that information to the seller. Hey, I have some good news and some bad news. Tell me the good news. We're closing on time. <laughs> What's the bad news? Well, the bad news is, and I wouldn't consider it bad news, but hey, apparently the buyer is going to uh, wholesale it to another, another buyer. What, what, what does that mean? What does that mean, wholesale? Well, <clears throat> you know how we're in contract at 675? Yeah. Well, he found another buyer that is willing to pay him a little bit more for it. So what does that mean for me? So that means that you're still going to get your 675, okay? But ultimately, the 50,000 uh, that we're going to close, right, is going to go to the agent that submitted the offer. Okay? The buyer, the seller may say, yeah, you know what? I'm okay with that. Let's get this deal done, right? And that can happen. And the, and the seller is okay. Kevin comes back. Yeah, I, seller was okay with it. And we, we go forward with that. Yeah. So how it's done is... Unfortunately, the seller is going to pay because we're closing it for a lot higher. Yeah, but remember on the seller's estimate, right? When they close the deal, the closing cost fees, it's going to say that they closed it at uh, seven twenty-five, but it also is going to have the expenses, right? It's going to have if there was any commissions paid, closing cost fees, and also that fifty thousand that was given to the uh, to the buyer. It'll show full transparency. So when the uh, seller does their taxes, they're going to be able to use that as expenses because they are not collecting this. Remember, it's what the seller nets at the end of the day is what they pay taxes on, right? And if it's their primary home, right? Single person up to 250, married couple up to 500,000, right? If it's an investment, there may be capital gains. Meaning anything over 250 as a single person, they're going to pay capital gains. Any, any um, interest or uh, proceeds over 500 on a married couple is going to pay property taxes. If it's an investment, then, you know, a 1031 exchange may be. But in circumstances like this, because the property is in really bad condition, it's either they inherit the property or they just let the property go. But to answer your question, Jack, is they're not going to pay taxes on money they never received. And when they submit this to the to their uh, accountant, they're going to see all of the money that they made and all of the expenses. Yeah, they sold it for a higher price point, okay? And the new buyer is going to get the blunt of it because that's what it's going to show at seven twenty five, not six seventy five, okay? But that's on the buyer. That would be on you. But your in, in, in your case, you're not going to keep it anyways because you're going to renovate it, you're going to fix it, and you're going to sell it for nine twenty five. So that end user, the buyer that moves into a ready, beautiful home, is going to pay the higher price. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I hope that kind of gives you that perspective of wholesaling. Okay. Be very careful when it comes to those. But that one has to be disclosed in the beginning, right? Hey, I'm going to do wholesale, or you just change my. Okay, you know what? I'm fixing to do wholesale. Seventeen days to do all this. So in, within seventeen days, we just disclose the AA. That's correct. That's, what I, okay. That's correct. That is correct. All right, let's go back to the uh, presentation. So the original buyer, however, is not released from the obligation or conveys of the agreement and could still be liable along with the assignee in the event of a breach, right? All parties involved are advised to seek legal advice. 
regarding the assignment. As brokers and agents cannot advise on any potential legal or tax consequences. Remember, we don't give legal advice and we don't give tax advice. When it comes to those, you send them to the proper person, right? I don't, I, I'm not a tax person, Kevin, I'm sorry. Please talk to your CPA or your accountant. Okay, I'm not an attorney, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Please, if you want, seek legal advice. Okay, because issues may arise, guys. Issues may arise. And you don't, you don't um, introduce your own CPAs or attorneys because later they're going to blame on you. So it's better for them to choose their own. All right. I wanted to just show you this uh, quick uh, form. And this is, again, through the California Association of Realtors. Okay. It's called assigning. Okay. And it just goes back to the presentation, right, of what we just discussed, right? This is straight out of the California Association of Realtors, all right? Sometimes during the course of the transaction, as I said, there may be a situation that may occur that may alter the way we originally agreed upon. As long as everyone is on the same page and everyone is moving forward, then you're not going to have any issues. It's when the moment that the seller says no to that, right, when the seller says no to it, then that stops. Because remember, if I'm going to wholesale it or assign it to a different party other than me, the seller has the right to say no to it. Because the seller's position and in, 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 uh, um, condition was, I accepted Kevin's offer under those terms. Now you're going to alter all this stuff? No, I'm not going to accept it. So either the buyer, the original buyer closes or we cancel. So my hands as a buyer is tied, okay? Because I'm in the mercy of the seller giving me the green, uh, the thumbs up and the okay to do so, to move forward. And if the seller doesn't, then we have no deal. Then unfortunately we cancel, we have to find another property that the seller may be flexible to do so. Is everyone on the same page of what I've just explained? Yes. Okay. Okay, it's not, it's not rocket science, but I also want you to be mindful that these conditions may happen, especially if you're the listing agent and it, you come across a listing that is in bad condition, you're going to get investors that are going to try to get that property, right? Mm -hmm. Especially the ugliest, the smelliest of the houses and you price it correctly, you're going to get investors because their number one priority is they want to make them pretty and they'll sell it for a higher end price. And as the listing agent, be mindful as how you receive these offers. Really just get that idea is, hey, you know what? There's a potential that they're going to sign it. There's a potential they may wholesale it, right? Full transparency, let the seller know, okay? Because if this goes sideways and it doesn't go to the benefit of your client's best interest, that opens up a can of worms, okay? So... Just to recap, and then I'll, I'll close it at this, right? Assigning contracts, right? Mm -hmm. Assigning contracts are the following, okay? Assigning a contract is when you add a new person to the contract, and that could be multiple peoples, or deleting someone from the contract, okay? Adding or taking away. An assignment is also... Okay, an assignment is also, I am buying it as my own personal name, but now I'm going to transfer it into one of my entities, LLCs, escort, trust. The seller in that instance cannot do anything as long as it's within that contingency period of 17 days. Y'all with me? Okay. The other aspect of an assignment is I am now assigning it to someone else. That is not me. Someone else is going to close it. Okay. On that case, within 17 days, you can do it. But on this one, you have to get the seller's approval in writing. The seller has to agree to it. And if the seller says, nope, that's not what I want to do. I have an agreement with Nikki and Nikki is the one that's going to close the deal because she's the one that submitted the original offer. 
If the seller says no to that, then we have no deal. Then unfortunately, we have to cancel. Because I can't force the seller to convince them to accept someone totally different, right? We don't know if they're going to be able to close because what if they don't close? Or what if they assign it to someone else, right? And that could be a, a chain reaction. So I would be mindful on that. Okay. And the last uh, component to that is wholesaling, right? And these assignments, they're going to assign it, but they're looking to make a spread on this. I locked it in for seven, uh, for seven, excuse me, for six seventy-five, but now I wholesale it to someone else for seven twenty-five. I'm making a fifty thousand dollars spread on this, right? That money goes to the buyer, doesn't go to the seller. But in this case, full transparency, you got to let the seller know what's happening because in their mind, they're thinking 675. So I'm going to make money on the 675 because at any given time, if the seller believes that you told we're increasing the price of 725 and they believe that that extra 50,000 is going to the seller and they don't get that extra money when they look at it this way, hey, what, Kevin? We closed at 725. I see fifty thousand dollars was given to to another party. What's going on here? That can open up a can of worms because Kevin did not fully explain what transpired, and that can jeopardize Kevin's position. Well, you have to give some sort of signature on your signing from seller, right? And you have to give some notice. Of Let me pull up the uh, AOA form real quick. If you guys are okay, I know I got one minute, but if you're okay, let me pull up the form that illustrates, okay? So everyone on Zoom, do you see the RPA? No. No, okay. Let's see, share instant. Do you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's go real quick on the RPA. The RPA, okay, under assignment, right? So assignment, assignment. Right here, K23, assignment request, 17 days. Now you can put a different amount too. You can put 10 days, you can put 20 days, right? That's your, the buyer's position of what assignment requests, right? Now let's look at 23 real quick, paragraph 23. All right, we're almost there, 23, right here, bam, assignment. Buyers shall have the right to assign all buyer interests in this agreement to buyer's own trust or to its own whole entity, a buyer that is in existence of this time of such assignment. Otherwise, buyers shall not assign all or any part of the buyer's interest in this agreement without first having obtained a separate written consent of the seller to a specified assignee. Such consent shall not be unreasonable with help, okay? Unreasonable on help, right? Meaning, hey, common sense, folks. You got to let the seller know what's going on. Prior to this assignment, buyer shall disclose to the seller the name of the assignee and the amount of any monetary consideration. Wholesale, okay? Kevin. I already told you I'm going to buy it, but I'm going to wholesale it. And I'm going to have Jack buy it, but he's going to buy it for a little higher. I'm going to make a $50,000 spread when we close this deal. Okay. So Kevin's responsibility is based on this condition. Okay. Any consideration because there is monetary consideration that I'm going to make from doing this deal. Even though my hands are clean, I'm not closing the deal. I'm not putting any additional stuff. The buyer the new buyer is the one going to close it. Between the buyer and the assignee, buyer shall provide assignee with all documents related to this agreement, including but not limited to the agreement and their disclosures if assignee is a whole owned entity or trust or a buyer that assigns does not need to resign or initial all documents provided. Whether or not an assignment requests, uh, requires seller consent at the time of the assignment, Assigning shall deliver a letter from the assigning lend, uh, lender that assignee is pre-qualified or pre-approved as specified in paragraph 6B 
shall assign fail to deliver such letter, seller after first giving assigning a notice to perform shall have the right to terminate this agreement. Buyer shall within the time specified um, in this uh, paragraph 3K deliver any request to assign the agreement for seller consent. If the buyer fails to provide the required information without the, the time frame, seller withhold of any consent shall be deemed reasonable. Any total or partial assignment shall not rely, uh, uh, relieve, I'm sorry, buyer or buyer's obligation to pursue into this agreement unless otherwise agreed by the seller under car form AOAA. Parties shall provide an assignment agreement and the escrow holder within a day after the assignment, any uh, nominations by the buyer shall be subject to the same procedures, guys. Okay. Now, let me show you real quick the AOA form. So you get an understanding of what that form looks like. All right, so let's see, where is the AOA form? Da, da, da. Okay, if you find it, you get a gift card here. So where is my AOA form? So I don't see it, let's see if I... All right, so here's the uh, here's the form. It's all it's all within the terms of the condition. So, not not necessarily verbally. Be they the new buyer has to agree to this. Okay. So part of part of the uh, full disclosure and transparency is if we're going to assign it to someone else, typically it's a cash deal or hard money type of transaction. So I just want to be so it's someone that's putting a, a substantial down payment or, you know, exactly. So. The issue, remember, because they're still deposit in escrow, okay? And part of the stipulation here is uh, one one other thing that I didn't mention is what happens to the, the, the uh, deposit, right? The deposit, let's just say that I put in, right? And let's say I put $20,000 deposit in good faith, right, to secure this property. But now I'm uh, assigning it or wholesaling it to someone else. I'm going to have that person submit an additional 20000 into escrow, but I'm going to give escrow instructions that as soon as the money that he puts in, that the money that I originally put in gets uh, released. Simon, so with yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so to the new assignee, where there's a wholesale situation, are you having to have a BRBC? That's a very good question. That's a very, very good question. <clears throat> the answer is yes. Yeah, to protect yourself from any potential of commission, then yeah. Anyone that you're going to assign to that is different than you, yes, you want, must have a buyer representation agreement. Because if you don't, you have nothing to hold them accountable for obligations to pay your commission. Even what though, is the I, I, even though I, we have already agreed through the terms, right? I've seen situations and I've seen circumstances where deals fall apart, but the uh, buyer, which is the, the second party, Go out there and try to make a deal with the seller. Question. So the the original BRBC is good following the assignee, but do you want to have a separate BRBC with the assignee as well? A hundred percent. So <clears throat> again, going back to full transparency, right? Okay. I don't have any written agreement with this new person, all right? So let's just say theoretically, okay, and I apologize if I'm going a little over our time. So I have an agreement, and, and uh, Kevin is the, the buyer, right? I'm the agent representing the, uh, the buyer. I have a buyer representation agreement with Kevin. 
everything's secure, right? I agreed, he agrees, two and a half. I was able to negotiate with the listing agent and Nikki is the listing agent on this. I submit an offer to Nikki, 675, and I also submit my SVPP forms asking the seller to pay me two and a half percent. Seller uh, gets the offer presented from Nikki. Nikki comes back and says the seller has accepted the two and a half percent. I've secured my commission, right? Because I submitted the proper documents. Kevin and I have a buyer representation agreement, but Kevin is an investor. And after crunching numbers, he's, he's uh, stretching himself very thin, right? So now he reaches out to Alicia and Kevin says to Alicia, hey, Alicia, I have this deal that I'm in escrow. And after looking at my financials, I'm putting myself in a kind of a strain. And I wanted to see if you're interested in uh, taking over it, right? And Alicia says, run the numbers and all that. And she's okay with that. Okay. Kevin has to let me know what his intentions are because I have the agreement with him. So now Kevin says, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to assign it over to Alicia and I want you to submit a request immediately. I have to do the paperwork. What else am I including? I'm including the buyer representation agreement because now Alicia is the new buyer. I don't have anything with her. I only have it with Kevin. So now when I'm talking to Kevin, I'm also going to be communicating with the new buyer because I am vetted. I'm trying to close the deal and try to earn my 2.5% from Nikki's client. So moving forward, you need to have a new buyer representation agreement secured by Alicia. And it's going to be the same thing, folks, 2.5% because you've got to submit this as, as part of the requirements now. I know it's a lot more paperwork, but that's just the nature of what we're dealing with. Okay, so the question here is, what if Felicia has her own agent, right? Then you don't deal with that. So, hold on, hold on, that's a good point. Because what if Felicia is being represented by someone else, right? or wants to bring in her own agent. Okay, what, what's the scenario around that, right? If Alicia has her own agent, okay? Well, I'm in contract already, right? I'm in contract with Nikki and I'm on contract with, uh, with Kevin who I have an agreement, right? If she wants to come on board, okay, there's conditions, okay? One, I have to get the okay and the permission from the seller, right? First and foremost, because the seller may not agree to this. So I have to submit the proper documentation. Now I'm talking to Alicia and I'm introducing myself. Hey, Alicia, good afternoon or good morning. Um, so Kevin brought it to my attention about the intent that you want to submit an offer, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, add yourself into the agreement. You're going to end up closing the deal. First, I still got to get the uh, proper documents. Part of that uh, process is I have to have a buyer representation agreement because you're going to be the new buyer, okay? Right? Well, then she says, <clears throat> I already have an agreement with another agent. I'm going to ask, is it an exclusive or not an exclusive? Because remember, she's obligated, right, to pay compensation if she has another agreement. That's not my problem. That's her problem because that agent can go after for commission. So let's say she has an exclusive written agreement with another agent. That's going to compromise. To me, I can care less. Okay. Because I already secured my agreement with the seller. So if she wants to bring another person then I, I have no authorization. She can't, but unfortunately, that agent will have to get paid by who? By the buyer. By the buyer. buyer yeah. Get yeah, because that has to be agreed. Now, the situation with Alicia, if she wants to step in, she has to agree to the terms, part of the condition. And if she doesn't agree to the terms because she doesn't want to be obligated to pay, right, because that other agent cannot just say, I'm going to bulldoze you, Simon. You already have the commission, but that commission goes to me if she's going to be the new buyer. Okay? I'm just saying, right? What if that situation happens, right? Well, I, 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 then you're going to have to have that conversation with Alicia. 
And the conversation is going to be like this. Alicia, I respect the decision. So here's a couple options that I would encourage you to do. One, in order for your offer to be considered as part of the condition, I know that you already agreed with Kevin, but we still have a commission and I have to have a, a written agreement just so I'm in compliance. Now, one, you can terminate the agency agreement that you have with the agent, or you can tell the agent, unfortunately, you can still represent me, but not on this, this agreement. So you'll do a modification of the buyer representation agreement. Telling the agent saying, hey, this property is excluded from our agreement, but if you find me any other properties and we submit an offer, then we'll go through the motions of that. Does that make sense? That's the beauty of all of the agreements that we have. Modification of the buyer uh, representation agreement, the terms and condition of the agreement that I have. And she, if she's not, if she doesn't want to, then we have no deal. She can pay trust. Absolutely. Yes. She can pay her agent. Okay. She can pay her agent but I'm still going to be involved in this transaction because my original agreement was with, uh, with Kevin. I'm still gonna get paid, I'm still gonna be involved. If she wants to bring another agent, then I'm just gonna be in communications with another agent. She is gonna get uh, the additional, um, she's gonna put the additional uh, money into escrow. Remember the down payment, the closing costs, and if she's gonna be bringing another agent and she's responsible, then she'll bring the additional compensation into escrow. Yes. So as buyer's uh, agent, you will get the commission from the new, um, new price or the, um, the previous price from the original buyer? That's a very good question. Very good question, right? The question here is, we had an agreement at two and a half percent, right? With the, with the original buyer, Kevin, at 675. Okay. Now we're transitioning over to 725. What is the commission going to reflect now? Okay. Is the commission going to be based on the 725 or is the commission going to be based on the 675? Okay. How many people say 675? Okay, how many people say 725? How many people don't even know? Okay, the answer is it has to be based on what the seller's net is going to be, right? If the seller's not going to net the additional 50,000, then why would we charge that additional commission to the seller? So the instructions to escrow is the commission is going to be structured at the 675, not the 725. So you're going to get paid commission of two and a half on the 675, not the 725. Because remember, the seller is going to end up paying a little bit more and not get a little bit more, if that makes sense. Okay? I hope that kind of answers your question. All right. And then finally, here's the uh, form, the partials, okay? Uh, assigning, if you're going to assign it, uh, then you would check here if it's going to be to a trust or your own entity, mm -hmm. such as a corporation. Deliver a proper documents, right? Proper documents not yet delivered. You know, the pre-qualification or pre-approval. Okay, this is some of your questions you were saying, Jack. Affect the failure to return any attachments and then the consideration, okay? This is the section if you're wholesaling, okay? Section three, consideration for assignment. It says the following. Buyer has not received and will not receive any monetary consideration from assigning from this agreement. Or if B, if you check in, buyer has received or will receive consideration from assigning this amount of, and this is the amount. So what was that amount? Okay. Then I would have to put the amount that I'm going to be wholesaling it, right? Full transparency. So if I know that it's 675 and 725, I'm putting here that I'm going to make a spread of 50,000. So this form, believe it or not, Okay, has to be assigned, uh, assigned by the sellers right here. And they have to accept it, okay? If they don't accept it, they, then we have no deal. But here's the full transparency of the spread that I'm making, okay? So this is the amount that I'm letting the seller. So if, if, uh, if Kevin is the listing agent, right? Kevin is the listing agent, then Kevin has to say, here's the, uh, the spread, right? So then Kevin has to get the approval from the seller. Question. When you're listening, then when the person is doing wholesale, whatever, so selling something, you're 
So you have to get the whole new loan document from the new buyer. Because well, remember, this is this is still in the very beginning stages, because if you have remember, remember this, OK, this is where you have to be very savvy and we can spend hours on this. Right. If you know that an offer was submitted that we can close in 15 days. Right. Hold on one second. Yeah. Or if it's a cash buyer, we can close in 15 days. Right. Because sometimes investors do that. Right. We can close it in 15 days. But then your contingencies are 17 days. Whose fault is that? It's the listing agent's fault, right? Because what you're telling the buyer is you can hold on to your contingencies for the remainder of the deal. 15 days, 17 days. This is where you got to be smart, folks, okay? So if you're the listing agent, you're going to tighten up those contingencies, okay? Those contingencies are going to be less than 10 days to be with the terms of the agreement. So once the uh, buyer releases any and all contingencies, right, then that exposes the buyer's deposit, right? In essence, back to your question, Nikki, right? And your question is, you know, new, new yeah, it's gonna be a new loan. Well, that's gonna be transparency, 50,000, so that means he's selling it to someone else. So he has to be- <laughs> But the new buyer and the new lender don't care. They, they only care what the amount yeah remember the, the 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 new buyer is going to close it at 725 so they can care less of what i'm going to make on it they just so, want to close it so from the beginning if you're going to be a seller you got to have two buyers already assigned and then open it to do that because if you're going to find another person to sell in between the 17 days it's very hard okay because you say well, oh i found another buyer yeah and I that, that's too late because the yeah. seller's gonna cancel the deal. Yeah. No, I. I, I listing agent said no. They don't disclose from the. Seems a very good relationship relationship between the seller and the agent, Simon. Yeah. Because maybe you will think that I'm pocketing the fifty thousand. No, from the beginning, you got it. Well, you you, you shouldn't be pocketing any money no. because remember, you're a licensed professional. No. Okay, you you're already gonna. Very well. Okay, you're you're making you're making money. So let me leave with this, guys, because I have another uh, uh, ALC meeting at twelve. <clears throat> Again, going back is full transparency, right? Everyone is on the same page, right? We have to be full transparency. The other component to full transparency is your obligations under this agreement, right? And the obligation for you is for you to understand that. Um, <clears throat> The seller has to cons consider this, right? And if they don't, we don't we don't have a deal. All right. The last component to this is doesn't matter who you represent, but if you represent the listing, remember you got to tighten up those conditions, right? Because if not, you look like the bad person because you're not protecting the seller's best interest. So look at the whole contract. If they're saying we can close in 10 to 15 days. And your contingencies have to be reduced as well. Because if this buyer now does transfer it to another buyer, okay, that's going to change maybe the delay to close this deal. It's not, it's not just the delay. <laughs> but that's where you need to have a counter, a tight counter. And emphasize and stress the importance is if the seller's okay, how do you protect the seller? Because we don't want to drag it. We're still in contract for 15 days. And if the buyer moves in and ultimately says, I can do it in half and make it happen in 50 days. And now we're five days into this. Remember, they only have 10 more days to perform. And if now Jack uh, uh, assigns it to you, the buy the pressure is on the new buyer to close in 10 days. Okay. So now as a listing agent, I'm going to be very calculated in how I, I maneuver this transaction. And how I'm going to do this is, I'm going to still keep the conditions, right? And if she doesn't, one, release the contingencies of uh, any and all, then I the seller has the right to cancel because we're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to drag it, okay? And what happens is agents don't understand how to maneuver this, and this is why they they get frustrated. This is the reason the deal falls apart. Okay. How crews work, PC or S in this situation? That's really yeah. You have to... Tell the PC. The no, you have to tell the PC because TC and escrow yeah, works for you. Uh, no, so gonna, you can distinguish 
good agent as a listing agent, experience and no experience, that's when you define yeah. it. So like you said, if you make as a listing agent, make the seller to drive this, this deal, you're on, a, on experience. All right. Well, with that being said, folks, I uh, that concludes our uh, our class. So thank you very much. I appreciate